Imagine the Great Plains in the dead of winter. The wind howls across endless snow. The night air drops far below freezing, and the land offers no shelter but what you build with your own hands. No brick chimneys, no central heating, just a canvas of stars above and a thin tent wall between you and death. For centuries, Native American tribes lived in teepees, cone-shaped tents made of animal hides stretched over poles. To outsiders, they looked fragile, even temporary. Yet whole families slept inside through winters so bitter they could kill an unprepared traveler in a single night. How did they do it? How did men, women, and children endure freezing winds and heavy snow with nothing but hides, sticks, and fire? The answer lies in ingenious design, survival knowledge, and techniques that modern people can barely imagine. From fire pits to insulation tricks, from airflow control to the warmth of community, Native Americans engineered comfort out of simplicity. This is the story of how the teepee wasn't just a tent, it was a survival machine. To understand how Native Americans slept warmly, we need to understand the structure itself. The teepee wasn't random. It was precise. A cone shape, braced by strong wooden poles, wrapped tightly in buffalo hides or later canvas, and anchored firmly to the ground. Why the cone? Because it cut through the wind. While square houses rattled and leaked, the teepee deflected gusts around its sides. Snow slid off, rather than building weight on the roof. And the circular floor plan created an even distribution of warmth. At the center, a fire pit glowed. Smoke spiraled upward, guided by a vent at the top that could be adjusted with flaps. In winter, those flaps were angled to keep in heat while still letting smoke escape. It was both fireplace and ventilation system, something modern cabins often get wrong. The teepee wasn't just a tent. It was a thermal design honed over generations of brutal winters. The fire inside the teepee was more than light or cooking fuel. It was the heartbeat of survival. Carefully built in the center pit, it produced steady warmth that rose into the cone and spread across the hides. But the brilliance was control. Families learned to balance flames. Too large, and smoke choked the air. Too small, and cold crept in. The vent flaps above worked like an ancient thermostat, regulating air draw. At night, embers were banked under ash so they glowed until dawn. A simple stir brought them roaring back to life. This way, the teepee never truly went cold. The fire was always present. Imagine lying on a bed of furs, the crackle of wood in the dark, your breath visible but warming as flames push back the night. For the Plains tribes, fire was not optional. It was the difference between morning and never waking at all. The greatest thief of warmth wasn't the wind, it was the ground. Frozen earth pulled heat from bodies like a sponge. Native Americans solved this with layers. The first layer was brush or willow mats to keep bedding off bare soil. On top of that came thick buffalo hides, woven reed mats, or later, blankets of fur. These weren't luxury beds, they were insulation systems. The layers trapped air, forming a buffer between sleeping bodies and frozen ground. Children slept closest to the floor, cushioned in hides. Adults ringed the fire, often propped slightly higher. Everyone shared in the warmth, and no body lay directly on bare dirt. Modern campers use foam pads or sleeping mats for the same reason. The principle is identical. Insulation starts beneath you. Native Americans mastered that lesson long before science put it in textbooks. The teepee was wrapped in buffalo hides for a reason. Buffalo skin, with its thick fur and dense fibers, was one of the best natural insulators available. In the bitter plains, it blocked wind and trapped heat inside the shelter. Inside, families wrapped themselves in layered robes of hides and fur. Deer, elk, and buffalo provided cloaks, blankets, and bedding. 
multiple layers acted just like today's winter jackets, trapping pockets of warm air close to the skin. Even damp hides still held warmth better than cloth, and unlike woven fabrics, they resisted wind. When combined with the teepee's enclosed design, hides created a cocoon of survival. For us, down jackets and synthetic fleece do the job. For Native Americans, the buffalo was not just food. It was central heating. Survival wasn't solitary. Entire families, sometimes extended kin, slept together inside one teepee. The body heat of a dozen people, combined with the fire and hides, created a microclimate far warmer than the storm outside. Children were placed between adults for maximum warmth. Infants were sometimes swaddled in fur and tucked between parents. Elders, who needed the most heat, were kept close to the fire. Yes, it was crowded. Yes, privacy was scarce. But comfort was never the point. Warmth was. Togetherness turned every family into its own heating system. Today, survival experts call this shared body heat. Native Americans called it life. One of the most brilliant features of the teepee was its adaptability. The smoke flaps at the top could be adjusted, depending on wind direction and temperature. On calm nights, they were nearly closed to trap heat. On windy nights, they were angled to create a draft, pulling smoke out but holding warmth in. The hides themselves could be rolled upward during summer to allow airflow or dropped tight in winter to seal against cold. A lining of extra hides inside created an insulating air gap, much like double-pane windows today. This wasn't just shelter, it was an ancient form of climate control, built entirely from natural materials and knowledge passed through generations. What can we learn from these winter hacks? That survival depends less on technology and more on principles. Insulate the ground trap air in layers, use fire wisely, and never underestimate the power of community heat. Native Americans didn't fear winter because they understood it. The teepee was a machine made of wood, hide, and fire, but it was also memory, ritual, and ingenuity. Today, with heated homes and electric blankets, we've lost touch with that knowledge. But if those comforts failed, the teepee's lessons remain. Simple design, careful fire, and collective warmth can save lives. So, how did Native Americans sleep in teepees without freezing to death? By mastering insulation, layering hides, sharing heat, and using the teepee as a living machine of survival. Which trick surprised you most? The fire vents, the insulated floors, or the power of community warmth? Drop your answer in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think. And if you enjoyed this journey into survival wisdom, hit like, share it with a friend who'd never last one night in a teepee, and don't forget to subscribe for more forgotten lessons from history. Because sometimes, the past knows more about survival than the present.